I have been interested in art uh, since I was a very small child. I used to do a lot of artwork when I was a kid, and sketch and draw and fill sketchbooks, paint, anything I could get my hands on. Um, I loved art in high school. I took uh, some extra watercolor classes in high school, I remember. And then I went off to university and became an engineer and kind of left my art career behind. Um, at the time, I had been wanting to actually go to art school, but then I decided to go and make some money instead. And so I ended up working for 16 years as an engineer. And I spent a lot of my extra time writing. Um, I have four books published and just uh, doing art in my spare time. Uh, I did a lot of uh, pencil sketches, especially. Um, didn't do a whole lot of painting. I did a bit of painting over the years, but not a whole lot. And then um, I quit my job as an engineer and I followed my dream, which was to actually go work with animals. And when I started doing that, I started to feel creative again because I had been quite stifled in my job as a technical professional. So I decided to go ahead and and uh, start working with art again and actually what happened was I had injured myself and so I had a lot of spare time and so I started taking some classes and everything and that kind of led me to where I am today where I'm actually seriously looking at my art as a career it kind of I recaptured my love of it so I have been doing art for a long time off and on but I really count the last year and a half as where I really ramped it up for myself so that's kind of where my journey is at. I have always enjoyed painting because I love color. And I, so I tend to focus a lot on acrylics um, because that's uh, what my mentor paints with. And that's kind of one of the things that I've always enjoyed. So I paint mostly with acrylics, um, and then I also do watercolor. Um, again, I hadn't done watercolor color for 20 years, not since high school. And then this past year, um, 2020, I picked it up again and started learning uh, watercolor again. And uh, I've rediscovered my love for it. So I've been doing quite a few watercolors as well. Uh, I still do pencil work. Um, I do a lot of uh, work in my sketchbooks and stuff with pencil. And I, um, I also have recently gotten into doing ink. So I do um, black ink with a nib dip pen. And then I also, um, for Christmas, I actually got some colored inks. So I spent a lot of my time in January learning to use the colored inks. So I've been doing a lot of that as well, um, looking at hopefully getting into doing a little bit of illustrating with the inks. So um, that's kind of where I'm headed with that. But yeah, those are my main mediums that I use. Uh, the favorite piece that I've done, actually, I would say the, my favorite piece is this one that's sitting right here. That's my uh, version of the Split Rock Lighthouse uh, on Lake Superior. And it's based off of a photo that I took back in, oh, I want to say 2000 five-ish yeah it was a long time ago when I was down there um I'd gone there with my mom and my and two and one of my aunts and we uh really had a good time there and this is based off a picture that I took um when we were down there on the rocks so I um I'm really proud of how this one turned out it was my first painting of this size and it really freed me up to work on larger paintings um I would say probably some of my other favorite works that I've done um I recently did a black and white for the first time, which is really was really fun. You can see it up there. Um, that one was quite different for me to do. Um, I did some watercolors of, of horses um, that were quite fun. And I have also done, um, with my inking, I quite enjoyed doing um, a uh, little ink sketch in my sketchbook of uh, my sister's kitten, Ollie. And that's probably one of my favorite sketches that I've done this year.
My biggest mentor is my instructor, who's David Jansen uh, from the Jansen Art Studio. Um, we'll put a link to their page in the uh, in the comments or in the description. Um, and he has taught me so much. I started taking his classes in August last year, and really, really, my skills just exploded. I, I'm taking color theory and one called the art of seeing from him, and I've found that my um, ability to paint has really grown since studying with him and I just love the way that he encourages us um, to always be positive about our work. So he's probably my biggest painting mentor. Um, for the Norwegian folk art that I do, the rose mauling, um, I do, I have followed and I actually got to take a class, an online class with uh, Lisa Lorenzen. Um, I'll link to her YouTube channel as well. And uh, I really have learned a lot from her about the Norwegian art of rose mauling. So that was, that's a kind of uh, another one of my mentors. And then just um, a life coach type mentor, I would say, is Ben Hart. Um, he runs Hart's Horsemanship out of the uh, UK. And I'm studying with him as well on not just horsemanship based things, but also on, um, he teaches us a lot about, you know, just life in general and confidence and that sort of thing. And so I would say that he's another one of my major mentors. What inspires me? That's a fun question. Um, a lot of my inspiration comes from animals. I love animals. Um, my sister and I actually run the Happy Little Hooves Pony and Donkey Sanctuary here in Saskatchewan. And um, so a lot of my work is of the ponies and donkeys um, at our sanctuary. I really enjoy painting them. Um, I also love painting cats. Um, so lots of animals. Uh, another one of my inspirations, I love painting pictures of my daughter. Um, I do a lot of my sketches of her. Um, flowers. Flowers are another huge inspiration for me. I do a lot of florals. Um, that's one of the things that David teaches us, so I've done a lot of florals. Um, and I grow a lot of flowers as well, so I have endless inspiration on the flowers out there um, with, with all of the... the uh, the flowers in my garden so I really enjoy that and uh, here comes one of my inspirations right now come here Ollie this is Ollie Ollie is an inspiration aren't you Ollie yes Ollie's the one that I drew the picture of he's got to come and say hello because I'm busy here so yeah so animals tend to be a large inspiration for me and then I just like also the um, Saskatchewan landscape um, I really enjoy painting the prairies, the skies, that sort of thing. So that's quite a quite a fun one for me. My favorite medium. Um, I would say my favorite medium is uh, the acrylic paints. I really enjoy using them. I like the freedom of using them. I have the professional acrylics, which is makes a world of difference and I just find that um, I can you know get the tones I want and I just have a really good time painting with them so I'd say they're probably my favorite um, my second favorite would probably be the watercolors uh, because I, I like color I'm a big fan of color so um, yeah those are probably my two favorites and then uh, the other ones I just enjoy playing with as well Why do I do art? Well, for me, art is a bit of a therapy. So I, I got back into art when I had injured myself. So it was actually the fall of 2019 that I really got back into things um, because I'd injured my foot. And so I had to spend a couple months with my foot up. Um, I'm a farrier. I trim horse hooves and it can be a bit of a dangerous job at times because I ended up actually rupturing my bicep last summer. So that was another reason why I've been focusing a lot on my art instead of my other jobs but um, so when I injured myself I got um, I got quite depressed I, I do fight depression and that's something that I'll talk to you guys about on this channel a bit is mental health and I was diagnosed with depression back in I would say 2000 
seven or eight, I believe. And so I'm on medication for it, but I do still struggle with it. And I find that when I'm not doing something creative, um, it really affects my mental health. So I just, I need to be doing something creative, whether it's writing or painting or drawing. And so getting back into art was really a therapy for me. Um, I spent quite a bit of time uh, when I first got back into art doing some mixed media. And I'll show you guys some of that in the future here. Um, the mixed media I found was just kind of a fun way for me to play. I started playing in an art journal and not thinking too much about what I was doing. Because when I'm painting and that sort of thing, I'm always thinking a lot more about the... Um, about the colors and color theory and you know all that sort of thing whereas when I'm in my art journal I'm just splashing color on the pages and playing around and I found that that was very therapeutic for me um, so and trying to capture my emotions in the artwork is another thing that that I really enjoy about art so I would say that that's kind of one of the reasons why I do art I've always been artistic and always enjoyed it but I also find it's really good therapy. Doing something creative really helps my mental health. What am I looking forward to in 2021? Well, I am looking forward to having this YouTube channel. This is something new for me. I'm stepping out there. Um, putting my face on camera is something that I'm a little nervous about because I am a bit of an introvert. But I'm looking forward to starting this YouTube channel and sharing my art with people. I'm looking forward to continuing my studies. Uh, I'm in the middle of those courses that I'm taking from David Jansen. And uh, I'm also taking a course, a YouTube course. And I'm studying uh, horse behavior. So I'm looking forward to continuing to learn things. Um, and uh, with my painting, I'm really, one of the things I'm really looking forward to this summer is trying plain air painting for the first time. I've drawn outside, but I've never actually gone outside with my paints to do plain air painting. So I'm planning on actually doing some of that this summer, and I'm hoping to take you guys on that journey with me so you can see the uh, entertaining aspects of fighting the bugs in Saskatchewan to paint. <laughs> Well, one thing that you will see me paint a lot of is ponies and donkeys. And that is because they are one of the, um, they're one of my primary inspirations. Um, with having the pony and donkey sanctuary here, I take hundreds of pictures of them. And I just find that they're so much fun to paint. We have mainly miniature horses and donkeys, and then we have some larger ponies as well. And we have some bigger horses as well here. And I just find them extremely inspiring. So they're probably my favorite subject to paint. Um, second to that, I would say is probably landscapes. I really enjoy painting landscapes. Um, I'm looking forward to practicing that more. Uh, I've been learning a lot about perspective and that sort of thing and uh, conquering some of my fears about painting certain subjects. So I'm really looking forward to that, but I would say primarily horses. So my biggest piece of advice for beginning artists is really to practice, 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 because that is the only way that you will get better. And that is the way that you'll free yourself up. I used to be so stifled um, in my artwork because I had convinced myself that everything I did, every piece that I did had to be saleable. So I was struggling a lot with creativity because I was forcing myself to try and make everything perfect the first time. And one thing that I did in the beginning of 2020 was I told myself, no, everything I do is practice. And if it's good enough to sell afterwards, then I'll sell it. But otherwise, it's just practice. And that was so freeing for me, because all of a sudden, instead of being afraid to try something different, now it was just practice. So if it didn't turn out, it didn't turn out. I would just turn the page in my sketchbook or I would, you know, just put that board aside. And that's what actually allowed me to feel like I was capable of painting the flowers and the florals and everything that I started painting in August. 
um, because I knew that it, there was a learning curve and I didn't have to be perfect. So that was a big one for me. Um, and then the other thing that that freed me up to do is to really tackle things that I struggled with before. Because previously, 99% of my drawings and everything were of animals, and in particular, horses and bunnies and things like that. Um, I tended to gravitate towards herbivores because I just, for some reason, I found them easier to draw. I think maybe it's the placement of their eyes. So I would kind of gravitate towards drawing those things rather than trying the things that I struggled with, which I really struggled with drawing people. And I really struggled with drawing cats for some reason. There was just something about them that I couldn't quite capture the way I wanted. So what I actually did, my goal last year was to learn to draw people because it was something that I struggled with. And previous to allowing myself that freedom to practice, I would not have done that. I would have avoided them like crazy because I was too afraid to fail. But now I look at it as practice. So I spent a lot of time drawing people last year. I, I drew people. I painted my first portrait um, through the courses that I'm taking. I drew portraits. I, um, in Inktober, I decided to participate in Inktober last year, and I focused a lot on drawing people portraits and full body um, positions and stuff because I wanted to learn. And I've seen my skills at it grow exponentially over the last year. So then this year I decided I was going to tackle not only continuing to draw people, but also drawing cats because I struggled with drawing cats. So I've been focusing a lot on that and learning how to draw them and I've been sketching them and I've been painting them and it's just been fun to, to learn new things and to practice. And like I say, now when I have a, a failure in my sketchbook, I just turn the page and, you know, it's move on to the next thing. Or, you know, with acrylics, one thing I like about the acrylics is if I have a problem, if I fail at something, I can just paint over it. So that was, you know, I, I, I remember at Christmas time, I was painting a picture for my sister um, of her cat and her bunny. And um, I was painting the cat and there was just something that wasn't looking right on it. So I took some measurements off of, off of my reference photos and scaled them up to what my picture was. And I realized that I had done the eyes completely too large. And instead of panicking and giving up and everything, I was like, no, I, I can fix this. And so I just painted over them. I, I painted them over and then I repainted. And it was just it was something that was so freeing for me to under to realize that I could just practice, that I didn't have to be perfect every time. And so that would be my biggest advice that I would give to beginners is to not give up if you aren't where you want to be. Because the only way to get where you want to be is to practice.